The Liberal government has outlined its vision for a post-pandemic economy in the speech from the throne. Will the opposition support it? Raquel Dancho is the Conservative Party's public safety critic and Jenny Kwan is the NDP's critic on housing and immigration. Uh, Ms. Dancho, I'll start with you. What is missing from today's speech that might have swayed your party to support it? You know, Katie, I was quite shocked, actually, to see the Liberals' throne speech today. This is a Liberal government that's been in power for six years and just had a $600 million election, and yet you wouldn't be able to tell uh, from their throne speech there was really barely any mention of the number one issue facing Canadian families, and that's the rising cost of living. Canadian families are worried about buying groceries, heating their homes, filling their tanks, and, of course, breaking into the housing market. And there was really very little acknowledgement of the impact inflation is having on Canadian families. And it was just very disappointing to see that on behalf of my constituents and many of the seniors on fixed incomes that are deeply concerned about their bottom line and those kitchen table issues that are not being taken seriously by this Liberal government. Now, they did, in the speech from the throne, mention uh, housing and uh, trying to find ways to make housing more affordable and sort of expand the market so people can get in. Was that not satisfactory to you? I think we've seen housing prices go up dramatically in the last six years under this Liberal government. In some areas of the country, housing prices have gone up over 100 percent. I saw nothing in that throne speech to convince me that the Liberals are going to be taking this seriously or doing anything to address it. And again, this impacts Canadian families deeply, and they were looking for reassurance that the Liberal government is taking inflation seriously, taking the rising cost of living seriously, taking the housing crisis seriously. And I was not convinced that any of those issues were being taken seriously in this throne speech by the Liberal government. Ms. Kwan, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh said the Liberals better not take NDP support for granted. Uh, we know that the bloc is saying that it will live with this speech. It's not going to do anything to, to allow this government to fail, at least over this speech. With that in mind, will your party oppose the speech to send a message to the Liberals? Well, um, we're going to have a caucus meeting tomorrow, so we'll have that discussion with my caucus members. But I've got to tell you that this throne speech was very disappointing. Uh, it is perhaps one of the thinnest th throne speech that I've seen in a very, very long time. Uh, the government spent more than two months after the election, and this is all that they can come up with. Look at the issue around housing across the country. We heard from constituency to constituency saying that housing crisis is their number one issue, and yet the throne speech barely addressed it. I was absolutely dismayed that when the government says that they will put reconciliation as their top priority and yet they do not put any mentioning on a for indigenous by indigenous uh, housing strategy that to me is absolutely shocking the other aspect of it uh, as well is that we need supply we need the government to build affordable housing true affordable housing and not the liberal definition of affordable housing so that people can have that foundational piece in place without a home you can't really address any of the issues when we talk about seniors we care deeply about seniors I've had constituents after constituents and come and tell me about the loss of their GIS and what that means for them. I already have seniors who tell me that they've lost their home and been rendered homeless. How is it possible that the government has ignored that cry for help? So for me, this is absolutely devastating. And look at the health care issue. My goodness, if you think about pharmacare, if we don't have our health, we don't have anything. That's another piece. You would think that the Liberals would actually mention universal pharmacare, but it's not in this throne speech at all although it's been part of the Liberals' red book for decades now. So, you know, really, where is the Prime Minister at to have spent more than two months after the election, and this is all that they can come up with, and I'm just sorely disappointed. Um, Ms. Dancho, uh, are there any topics on which you see where Conservatives might be able to work with the Liberals going forward? Any, any subjects at all? I think what we're really focused on as Conservatives uh, in Ottawa fighting for our constituents is getting Canadians back to work. We're seeing about 800,000 people on unemployment insurance. We see help wanted signs everywhere. We have a massive skills gap in this country. And yet again, none of those issues were addressed in this throne speech. Conservatives are focused on getting every industry and every area of this country back to work, getting the economy firing on all cylinders and getting Canadians back to work, bringing back those opportunities. And again, that was something that was not included or recognized as an issue in this throne speech. So in addition to that, the cost of living is going up. It's deeply impacting seniors on fixed incomes. It's deeply impact 
impacting uh, the kitchen table issues of every mom and dad in my community. And yet that issue is not being taken seriously by this Liberal government. So if they would have shown leadership, again, this was uh, an urgent throne speech from the Prime Minister. He called a $600 million election for this throne speech, and there was really nothing new. It was just recycled promises from the past six years. So we have very little faith that the Liberals are taking seriously the major issues facing Canadian families. And so we'll have to discuss as a caucus what we're going to do. But what we really want to see is leadership on getting people back to work and getting inflation under control. But were those not the promises that won the Prime Minister the election, Ms. Dancho? Oh, I didn't see any of those priorities really focused on or in really flushed out very well in this throne speech at all. I'm not sure if uh, Jenny or anyone else saw them. I agree with Jenny in terms of the issues impacting Canadians that are not represented in this throne speech. There are critical issues that we were hoping to see as Conservatives and opposition parties that were not reflected in this throne speech. Again, $600 million election for this throne speech, barely any new ideas, and they were not and are not taking inflation or the rising cost of living seriously. And it's very disappointing. Uh, Ms. Kwan, your your party is seen as a much more willing dance partner partner with the the uh, Liberals. Um, you know, have you discussed in caucus any sort of red lines that that you look at and say, you know, this is something that might be worth bringing the government down over? You know, what are those issues that you're discussing in caucus? Well, what we've always said is that w w why we're here is to fight for Canadians, to get help for Canadians. Uh, and that's why we, we got sent back here. In fact, at the election, after the election, the electorate made it very clear that they wanted members of parliament to get back to work. And so what I was looking for in this throne speech are real plans uh, in terms of action. Look at the climate emergency uh, situation, right? We've been talking about it. And in British Columbia, my home province, we've had the heat dome in the summer, We've had forest fires. We're now into the floods. Like climate emergency is real and we need action to address this because if we don't now, it will be too late. And so for that throne speech, what was I looking for? I was looking for the government to make good, for example, or have a mention on ending the fossil fuel subsidies as a start to address the climate crisis. I was well, looking know, for but, the government but, but, but to talk Minister about Bebo, transition. Minister, uh, just to jump in there, Minister Bebo made that promise at, at COP26. Does it need repetition in the throne speech? Well, like, does that negate uh, his comments before this? Well, surely the government can make sure that it is part of their throne speech. What is the purpose of the throne speech? Throne speech is to lay out the plan of what this government's agenda is. How could it be that something as important as that is actually not written on paper for everyone to see to say that is their direction? So. We hear ministers say things all the time. The prime minister say things all the time, and they never actually even make good on it. I was looking for that signal in this throne speech to say that they will, in fact, once and for all, actually address the subsidies for the fossil fuel industry. I was looking for the government to say that we will have a plan to, for just transition to ensure that the workers don't have anything to worry about as we transition out into a uh, into an economy that is based on um, sound environmental measures, as an example. I didn't see any of that either. So then when you talk these kinds of talk, and then we always hear this from the Liberals, they always say the right things, but then they don't deliver. This was a message to be sent to Canadians to say that we hurt you. Climate emergency is a number one priority, and we will take action, not just words. All right, uh, uh, Ms. Kwan, Ms. Dancho, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.